Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss another very important function with respect to window function related SQL queries and that is lag and lead function. Okay, and these are very important topic with respect to any SQL related interview process as well. Okay, if you are in data engineering domain or in data analytics domain, then a lot of time while creating reports and some different data analysis which is coming under advanced and data analysis, there we might need the help of this lag and lead function. So you should have a clear idea on this. Okay. So if you have used this kind of function in any other SQL, same concept is applicable here also. Nothing difference for Snowflake. Okay, just I'll be showing you the application. So these are mostly called as positional function. Okay, that is obviously these are related to position of a particular value with respect to other values. So obviously you can understand that in the window order by is required. Any function when we are dealing with position, that time we should be giving order by because if we don't specify order by then the will be getting separate positional value from the function and if you are giving order by then we will be getting a systematic positional value right so like lag lead rank tense rank okay or low number this kind of anything related to position if you want to apply in window function then you must be going with order by whether you want partition by or not that is totally optional right now just a brief introduction what is lag function basically lag function allow you to access to a value which is stored in the same column but in the different row above the current row okay and lead is just opposite okay lead function will allow you to access to a value stored in different row below the current row okay right i'll be showing you the demo that time it will be much clear okay right so let's try to understand first one application okay so let's consider a scenario where we have to analyze the human traffic of stadia okay so what is that let us try to understand so suppose you are having a data set where id is basically primary key column visit date is basically date which is kind of increasing by value one each time and then here how many pupils were present in the stadium that we here it is listed okay now you are asked to write a sql query to display the records with three or more rows with consecutive ids okay Remember consecutive IDs, very important point. And also the condition is the number of pupil in the stadium should be greater than or equal to 100 for each. Okay. So three or more consecutive IDs, if we are getting such that for all of them, the number of pupil attended in that stadium is greater than or equal to 100, those IDs only we have to return. Okay. So if, if you are having this data set, what you, you will be getting as output based on the condition? Basically, you will be getting row number 5, row number 6, row number 7 and row number 8. You might ask why? If you see row number 5, here the value is 145. Before that, the row is 99, which is basically less than 100. So that condition is not satisfied. But if you see, after 145 the value, the next test value is basically greater than 100. and then after the next test value also greater than 100. So see, consecutively we are getting three rows which is having value greater than 100. So that's why 145 is coming in the output. Okay. Similarly, if you consider this value row number 6, here 1455, you can say that here for 1455, the previous row is greater than 100, this current row as well as the next row is greater than 100. Okay. That's why 1445 is coming in the output or you can say in other way also 1445 as well as 199 as well as 180 these three consecutive values are satisfying the condition so it is giving output okay if you consider 199 then why it is coming in as output because the thing is before 199 if you consider two rows including 199 all three are having value greater than 100 that's why we are getting 199 or you can consider like this way that is previous to 199 the row, the 199 row as well as the next row, all three consecutively greater than 100. That's why it is coming 199. Okay. And here if you consider the last row, uh, if, if, if you check that this row and previous to this, these two rows are satisfying the condition. That's why 188 is coming in the output. Okay. So consecutive three IDs 
where the value is greater than 100, how it can be satisfied? It can be satisfied in three ways, right? One can be current row and previous two rows or current row next two rows or current row and the previous row and the next one row. Okay, like that. Like if you consider just now how I told you for row number five, it is coming in the output because the current row and next two rows is greater than 100 okay but if you consider this row number 6 you can say that this row number 6 is coming in the output there are two possible reasons okay one is this current row previous to the current row one row and after the current row one row all three are greater than 100 that's why it is coming or in another way you can say that this particular row number 6 as well as next two values consecutively total three values are greater than 100 so it is giving in the output right so, I hope you got the idea. Now, how to do this in SQL? That we need to understand. Okay. So, here we will be using lag or lead function. What we will do? If you see ID, visit date and pupil. These three columns we have taken from input table itself. And then we did some derived elements. Okay. Lag one day, lag two day, lead one day, lead two day. Okay. And how we achieve that? If you see, very simple. So, what we did? Lag one day means what is the property of lag see here this value 10 is actually coming in 2017 first january okay but when we apply lag operation by one unit by one unit offset then this 10 value is coming actually at second january okay that means that value which should come at first january that is now coming at second january this column right that means lag happened so that's why we are telling this lag one day one day because one day offset we applied okay then we computed this lag one day column you can understand easily from the row arrow okay then this lag two day how we generated lag two day we generated by lagging two unit offset okay so see what value was coming in first january now it is coming in this row at third january that means two days lag we applied okay and for this rows basically we are getting zero values because if you consider 109 this is the current row basically if you want to apply two days lag one day lag value will be 10 one more day lag there is no value and default value you can put as zero that, that time okay so that's what we have put here and this is basically the column what we are getting after applying two day offset lag similarly we are generating lead one day and lead two day now i hope you are understanding easily what is the meaning of lead one day so this 109 if you consider this value for this value it is coming at 2nd january but when you are applying lead what is the meaning of lead that is nothing but something happening before the desired time so 109 should come at 2nd january but because we applied one day offset in lead so we are getting the value at 1st january right similarly 150 which should come at 3rd january we are getting at 2nd january so this is lead one day similarly you can apply lead two day also so what value should come at 3rd January now it is coming at 1st January. So 2 days lead we applied right like that we have derived these 4 columns okay. And now we can easily get those rows which are basically consecutive 3 values are greater than 100 okay. How we can do? Simple. What we will do? We will put a where clause in this particular derived table okay. And the clause will be if pupil that is current row and lag one day that is previous row as well as previous to previous row okay that is current row and past two rows if all these values are greater than equal to 100 that means we should print that output print that id in the output section right i hope it is clear then what can be another possibility that is nothing but current row and next two rows okay so what we will do for any date current row and next two rows value we will try to compare whether all three values are greater than 100 or not if all three values are greater than 100 then we will be printing that id another possibility is current row and before the current row one row and after the current row one row okay that is current row is pupil lag one day lead one day these three values we will try to compare whether all three are greater than equal to 100 or not if any of these conditions are satisfied then we will be printing that id in the output to get our desired result okay so that's all the simple concept about lag and lead i hope this diagram this visualization gave you some idea right 
So remember this lag and lead are position related. So obviously you have to apply order by. Okay, order by is must whether you are using partition by or not that is totally optional. But order by is must because this is position related. So to maintain a systematic position, obviously we should be using order by. Okay. Not only that, two more things we need to know before applying lag or lead. That is basically what are the possible argument. So first one is basically the column name on which we want to apply. Okay. Then offset. Okay. So offset means how much we want to go before the current row or after the current row. Like if you consider here this for this column we are lagging one day. But this column we are lagging two days. Okay. That's why the value 10 which is happening at 1st January after applying two days lag. So it is delayed by two days. Now it is happening at 3rd January. So how you can control whether you should delay by one day, two day, three day, four day. That you should be controlling with the offset value. Okay. So offset is the second piece of argument. Okay. And then the next value is default. What is this default? Default is nothing but suppose after applying lag or lead, there is no value. Okay. If, if it is null, then whether you want to put null because null is the default or if you want to replace with some other value, you can put that. Like for example, if you consider this diagram here, when we are applying lag one day, that means what? That means basically each row will be going downward direction by one unit, right? So here 10 was coming. Now it is shifted to one row downward direction, right? But if you consider 10 for this row, what should come? Because before 10, nothing is there so that it can come in this place. So either by default, null will be coming or if you are mentioning that default value take a 0, here 0 will be coming. Similarly for lead also. If you see what, what in lead we are doing, if you consider this is the parent, parent column and this is what we are getting after applying lead one day, that time in simple way we can say what is happening. That is each value is going in upward direction due to application of lead. So 188 is going to one unit upward direction, one row above because of application of lead by one day. But in this row of 188, what should come? Because after 188, nothing is there so that it will come here. So by default, it will be null. Or if you want, you can replace with zero value. Like that, simple, right? So these are the three important argument. One is the column on which you want to apply the lag or lead. Another one is basically offset. How much you want to do lag or lead. And then the default value. If no value is there, what should be uh, placed in that position? Okay, either default is null. Or if you want, you can specify some value zero or something. Okay. Now let's see this particular context. Just now what I explained human traffic in a stadium. Let's try to do that. Okay. So first we are dropping the database and then what we are doing here, here we are creating the database, okay. Then here we are using the database. So if I refresh this particular place, here you are seeing Ramu database is created in public schema, currently no table is there. So we are creating the table as well as we are ingesting some amount of data, okay, right. So all these codes I will be providing in the description box or in the comment section, you can check, okay. Sorry, here one semicolon came, I will delete that. Okay, so inserted some dummy data just for demo purpose. Okay, so here all the rows got ingested. Now, if I do select star here, we will be able to see the actual data. Okay, now what I told you to get at least for three consecutive IDs for which the pupil count is greater than equal to 100. To get that, first what we will do, select ID visit date pupil, okay. Then first we will apply lag by one day. See the syntax, okay. On which column I am applying lag, then how much offset we are applying and what is the default value if it is exceeding, okay. Then as I told you that in this kind of window case, you must have to apply over clause. Whether you are using partitioning or not, that is totally dependent on context. But as lag is position related and order by makes a systematic position, so you have to apply order by. So obviously we are going to apply order by on ID column because on ID only we want to shift lag by one day. Then here we are just changing the offset for two days lag. Then for lead we are applying lead function by one day offset. Similarly we are applying lead function again for two days offset. Okay. And then here basically we have kept the result set in a common table expression. And then if I execute select star from this common table expression here we will be getting lag one day, lag two day, lead one day, lead two day value. Okay. Now, what I told you that consecutive uh, rows, okay, having value greater than equal to 100, how it is possible? Three possibilities. Number one, current row and previous two rows, okay. 
are greater than equal to 100. So that condition we have kept here. Current row basically pupil, lag one day, that is basically one previous row and lag two day, basically previous to previous row. Okay. If all these three are greater than equal to 100, that means that ID is satisfying our condition. Or another possibility can be what? Another possibility can be the current row. Okay. And the next row and next to next row. Okay. That is lead one day as well as lead two day. This can be another possibility. Or there can be another possibility which I will write here. Basically or I will paste that current row and previous row as well as next row. Okay. So this is another possibility of consecutive IDs greater than equal to 100. If any of these where clause condition is satisfied then we should be printing the ID. Okay. I will just write ID and then let's execute this one. Okay. So see 5, 6, 7, 8 rows we are getting and as per this particular data also I have shown you that the actual outcome is 5, 6, 7, 8. Those are the IDs. So this kind of advanced query you can simply execute with lag and lead. Okay. I hope you got this. Now if required based on business requirement you can apply partitioning as well. Like if you check the documentation here they have explained a beautiful use case of lag and lead based on partitioning. Okay. So suppose we are having a sales related table and then here employee ID is there. What is the year is stored? Okay. And basically how much revenue that employee earned for the company that is stored. Okay. Now suppose I want to compare for a particular employee. I want to compare previous year's revenue and current year's revenue to understand how the performance is going. Okay. So what we are doing, we are inserting the data like that. So for employee ID 0 for 2010 year, for 2011, for 2012 and 2013, what is the revenue we have listed? Similarly for employee 1, similarly for employee 2. Okay. Now what is the business requirement? That is to understand how the employees are performing. We need to compare individual employees revenue with respect to their previous year's revenue. Okay. So basically you can understand what we have to do. First, we have to apply partitioning on employee ID level and in that we will be making order by on year column and then we will be applying lag function and lag function will be applying basically on revenue column and that lag function output will try to compare with current year's revenue. Right? Simple. So select employee ID year revenue comma. See current year's revenue minus previous year's revenue over Partition by employee ID because the revenue should be compared for previous year and current year for the same employee, not with respect to some other employee. So we are grouping all the rows which are belonging to a particular employee in a particular partition, okay? And then order by year, right? So this is a beautiful example where we might need to apply lag and lead along with the partitioning, right? So this is how you should be applying. Practice is the only way to get comfortable with this kind of window function. I hope you understood this. Just have a good practice before going to any SQL or data engineering related interview process because this kind of window functions are favorite domain uh, to ask in the interview. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this. This is all for my this video. Thank you for watching.